In the last section, we learned some differentiation techniques, but we figured out that that doesn't derive everything that we need to take the derivative out. So we need to expand upon that and learn some more techniques. In this section, we're going to be learning the product rule. But before we get into the product rule, let's go ahead and review the four techniques that we know so far. So we know the constant rule, which is the derivative of any constant by itself is equal to zero. We know the power rule, where the derivative of anything to a power is you bring the power down and you multiply by the base of one less of the original power. The sum rule, where we can just add the derivative of our two pieces separated from the original two equations. The constant multiple rule, where we have constant times a function, so we can pull that constant out and then multiply it by the derivative of our function, by our other piece. Now, something else I want to discuss on this slide is that the notation is a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. So notice we have d dx of c d dx of x to the n. That really means I need to take the derivative of that piece. Now this notation just follows from what you're actually doing, you just don't know that you're doing it. So for example, if I have the equation y equals, and my equation can be anything here, so let me just pick a nice one, 2x minus 3. If I want to take the derivative of it, I would say, hey, I'm going to take the derivative of this here, and I'm going to take the derivative of this here. So it's almost like you're multiplying by it. And we know if we have an equation, if we multiply it on one side, then we have to multiply it on the other side as well. That's what we're doing here, but instead of multiplying it, we're taking the derivative. If I'm taking the derivative of my left side, then I have to take the derivative of my right side as well. Now, this here on the left, d dx of y, it's again almost like multiplication. I can multiply those fractions straight across, and so I'm taking the derivative of my y equation with respect to x. And that's notation that you're used to seeing. Now, the derivative on the right-hand side, that is what it is. That's not the point of this problem, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Okay, so we've reviewed our four rules. We discussed how our notation can be applied. Let us go ahead and review an example from what we've seen before. We want to take the derivative of y equals x squared times x cubed minus 6x plus 7. Now, this has a multiplication in it, so that means I'm going to have to simplify or I'm going to have to manipulate this before I take the derivative because our four techniques did not use any multiplication with the exception of the constant multiple rule. So to simplify this, all we need to do is distribute that through. Still an original equation that gives me x to the fifth, I add the exponent, minus 6x to the third plus 7x squared. So just doing a little bit of algebra there. Okay, now I want to take the derivative of it. So again, it's like saying I'm taking the derivative of this piece here and the derivative of that piece there. We know on the left that simplifies to be dy dx, and on the right I just need to use my four differentiation shortcuts. So first I have a power rule, 5x to the fourth, a sum rule, so just subtract it, a constant multiple rule, so I pull my 6 out, and I multiply it by the power rule, 3x squared. Or, hopefully you're starting to simplify that, 6 times 3 gives me 18. Plus, and that was a sum rule, another constant multiple rule, where I pull my 7 out, times the derivative of 2x to the first power, or again, if I simplify this, that gives me 14x. So I have the derivative of this piece, and I've managed to do it without the multiplication. Now that works for this example here, but that will not work for all examples. Hence, we need to learn what the product rule is. Before I get to the product rule, let me tell you what isn't the product rule. I'm going to tell you this because this is a frequent mistake I see students make a lot. So what students think is that if I'm trying to take the derivative of two factors,
functions that are multiplied, for example, f of x times g of x. The misconception is that it works the exact same way as my sum rule, where I can just take the derivative of the first and multiply it by the derivative of the second. Well, I'm going to use this example over here to tell you that that is not the product rule. That's not the rule that we're going to be using. So this x squared is my first. That's what's going to be represented by my f of x. And this polynomial, x cubed minus 6x plus 7, that's my second. That's what's going to be represented by my g of x. So I'm going to follow this formula here to prove to you that this is not the right formula. So the derivative, dy dx, if I take the derivative of my red circle here, that gives me 2x, times, now I have a quantity, so I'm going to keep it that way, the derivative of my blue circle, 3x squared minus 6. So if I were to simplify this to distribute that through, that would give me 6x to the third minus 12x. Now, it seems like that can be appropriate, but no, we took the derivative of the exact same equation that we did in the last example. So if we're doing derivatives, my answer from this should match with my answer from that. Let's go back and review of the answer that we got before. The answer here clearly is not the exact same thing, not even close to the answer that we have here. So this is to prove to you that this is not the product rule. So do not follow this process here, because if you do, you will get it wrong. So if that's not the product rule, let's figure out what the product rule actually is. And so here we go. If I'm trying to take the derivative of one piece multiplied by the second piece, it is the original of the second times the derivative of the first plus the original of the first times the derivative of the second. So anytime I see the primes, that means the derivative. Anytime I don't, that means the original function here. So it's a little bit more complicated than what we probably expected it to be. Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about this formula is that it's very forgiving. You can rearrange the order of almost everything in this formula and still get your answer right. So what I mean by that is if I accidentally switched up these two pieces, it would be okay because it's multiplication and multiplication works in any order. If I accidentally switched up these two pieces, it would be okay because multiplication works in any order. If I accidentally switched up my whole guys there, that would be okay because that's addition and addition works in any order. So it's very forgiving about the order. You can mess up the formula in almost any sort of way and still get the right answer. But the reason that I wrote it in this order is because we have more differentiation techniques past the product rule. And so, for example, the next section that we're going to be doing is the quotient rule. Now, the quotient rule mimics the product rule very closely. So the order of my quotient rule derivative is going to be pretty close to the order of my product rule derivative. So I wrote it in this order and help you to memorize it in this order. So when we move on to the quotient rule, you have pretty much almost everything down pat. Okay, now that we know what the product rule is, let's go ahead and apply it. And I'm going to apply it to that exact same example that we've seen a couple of times by now. Y equals X squared times X cubed minus 6X plus 7. So I'm going to use my product rule where this X squared is my F of X and this X cubed minus 6X plus 7 is my G of X. Now I'm going to write it out here. I'm going to write out my product rule without actually taking any derivatives. So my formula says, the original of the second, which is x cubed minus 6x plus 7, times the derivative of my first. So I'm going to go ahead and just write d dx of that to say I need to take the derivative of my first piece, plus the original of my first, which was x squared, times 
times the derivative of my second. So again, I'm going to write out that I need to take the derivative of my second piece, the one in blue. So there's me actually writing out my product rule without actually taking any derivatives. Okay, I want to talk about a different way I can write this, meaning a different notation. So recopying down most of it. But instead of saying d dx of x squared, a shorter way to write it is I can say x squared with a prime on it. Now, it's a little misleading sometimes because sometimes it might look like a 1. So make sure you do it in the diagonal to represent prime. And that's just to match with the notation that we have here. Prime means derivative. Plus x squared. And again, instead of saying d dx, I'm just going to say x cubed minus 6x plus 7 with a prime on it. So this is just to show you a different notation of it, different ways to write it. Okay, now let's go ahead and actually take the derivative. So I have my original of my second times the derivative of the first, just use a power rule, 2x, plus the original of the first times the derivative of the second, 3x squared minus 6. And now all I need to do is simplify this. So let me distribute my 2x through here and my x squared through there. That gives me 2x to the 4th minus 12x squared plus 14x plus 3x to the 4th minus 6x squared. And now when I simplify this, 2 plus 3x to the 4th gives me a 5x to the 4th. My x squared, negative 12 minus 6, gives me a negative 18x squared plus 14 and if we've done everything correctly, we should get the same answer that we got before without having to use the product rule. And so let's go back and reference that. Same thing. 5x to the 4th minus 18x squared plus 14x. So we now know that this is the official product rule. So at this time, students typically ask me, well, if I just multiply it first, here, that's obviously a lot shorter than me following the product rule. So why wouldn't I just multiply it first in all examples? And that's a great question, but note that sometimes it will not be able to multiply everything out first. So sometimes you're going to be forced to use the product rule. Now, in every single problem here on your homework, you'll be able to multiply it out first, but I will require you to do it by the product rule so you get practice in using it. So when you are forced to use it later on, it's nothing new. Okay, this is where I'm going to stop here. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at a lot more examples of utilizing the product rule.